Welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today we are going to look at the MUI text field and how to set a width and a height. While that sounds like a simple thing, I am actually going to th show you three different methods for how to accomplish that. One uses straight SX prop, one uses the input props that um, are a pretty cool feature on the text field, and the other uses styled components. So stick around. Here we are with a text field that does not have any styling on it. Um, and so let's go over to our code and add some width and height to see the difference and how that kicks in. So the first method that I'm going to use is simply add an SX prop here. And I'll say width of 300 and let's say height of 300. So we'd expect that this would render as a nice little square. However, we're going to see that that is not actually the case. Looks like our width did take effect as we expected. But let's go into the DOM and see what happened with our height. So first thing we need to do is we need to find the root class of our text field. And I can tell you that this is it right here because we see this MUI text field dash root class. So anything inside of this is a child component or element of our text field. And so um, interestingly, if we go down into the style section, I can see my width and I see that that is taking effect, but my height is not doing anything. What's going on is that we actually need to go to the MUI input base, dash root. Uh, we need to look at this element here, and we need to add our height on here. So keep this class name in mind, I've copy pasted it, and I'm gonna see what happens if I say height of 300 px down here. Now it looks like our height is taking effect as expected. So the input is actually the area that you do your typing into. So that is what we need to target with height. So let's strip this out of this section. And I am going to do a little bit of formatting here. And then what we want is we want to say MUI input base dash root is our selector. So what's going on here, the syntax is um, we saw that this was a child element, and so we need this space here. This space indicates that we are selecting on a child element. So it's just typical CSS rules there. The dot means that it's a class, typical CSS rules. So inside of here, let's put our height, and I'll say 300. And let's go back over here, and now we're seeing that it is rendering as we expected, so that's good. And just to be sure, then I will actually check the DOM. Here we are at a root. Here we are at that MUI input base, and I can see my height of 300 right there. I can see it's coming through in that MUI input base dash root class, so that's good. That's exactly what our SX prompt does, is it actually injects values into existing classes. Pretty cool thing in MUI v5. So um, before we move on from this, first I'm going to set this to 80. Second, I'm going to add a little bit of margin bottom so that we have some space between our next text field and this one. But one thing I wanted to show you before we move on is that there's a cool, another cool feature anyway inside of MUI v5 is that I can actually do this kind of shortcut for um, breakpoints. What this is saying is it's actually going to the theme and even though I have not applied a theme here, the default theme is available. It's going to the default theme and um, the default theme has built into it breakpoint values including XS, SM, MD, and I think it's LG after that. So um, it's grabbing the SM value, which is a value of 600 pixels, and then the MD value, which is a value of 900 pixels. And so what that's doing is that's saying when our screen is below a certain size, like we can see there, then give it a width of 200 pixels. So let's go up here, we see that width of 200 PX being applied. Now I expand the screen, we see that it's a width of 300 PX, the 200 PX is overwritten by that 300 px, so pretty cool thing there. Now let's add the next text field. And on this one, I am going to give it a placeholder real fast, uh, just some text in here so that we can see what's going on. And I will just say X, SX plus input props. And you'll see why in just a moment. So it's kind of the opposite in this case where um, in this one, I'm going to do input props and see if we can accomplish just with input props. So with input props, um, what we need to do is we need to pass an SX value inside of here. And so I'm going to say width of 300 and I will say 
height of 300. So basically what we were trying to do before. Now what's going to happen with this one is kind of the opposite of what happened up here. Here our height is going to be happy, but our width is not going to be set in the right place. So visually it looks like it is. And um, we are on the MUI input base dash root in the second text field here, and it looks like it's good, but then you go up to the root, and uh-oh, um, the root, even though it's not visible, it's actually taking up the entire width still. So we want to adjust that, and I want to extract this width, and actually still leave it on the SX, uh, the root level SX. So there we have that. Now, an interesting thing with the input props is just, it's a little confusing sometimes. Um, let's break this syntax down a little bit. So we have our typical curly braces to accept a prop value, right? Nothing special here. Then kind of like the SX prop here receives an object, this, the input props is receiving an object. So right now the compiler is happy because I'm giving it an object, right? That's the type that it expects. I do have TypeScript enabled. So it's looking at this and saying, okay, I'm satisfied, I have an empty object, but instead of that, I'm going to give it an object now that has the SX field in it. And so you can see typical JavaScript object syntax. I've got the field name, I've got a colon, and then I've got the value, which in this case is another object that has a field name of height and a value of 300. So um, just breaking that down because it, it was a struggle for me the first who knows how many times I saw that syntax. It took me a long, long time to figure that out. So anyway, the third method that I'm going to use here is the styled API. And I'm gonna get that import in place from at MUI slash system. There's another import you can use for styled. It accomplishes the same thing. So you may have seen that a different way. So I'm gonna say const styled text field equals, then here's our styled syntax right here. First thing we give it is text field. So that's saying what object to enhance or extend here. And the next thing that we give it is actually a list of options. This is a cool thing with MUI v5 styled components. So I'm just gonna give mine a name of styled text field. So this name value is kind of interesting. After we create our component and get it in our JSX down here, then if we actually look at the DOM after it's rendered, then we would see this name in the DOM. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to get our style values on here. So I'm gonna pass an object with, you got it, width of 300, and here is our syntax we settled on, ampersand space dot MUI input base dash root. So now let's get our height in here. And a height of 80 is all we need, just like usual. And then I'm gonna come down here and actually use this style text field. And I'm gonna give it a standard variant. And give it some placeholder text. So we're good to go. Let's take a look at this. Here's our third one. Same old, same old looks good. So we've got our width of 300 at the root level, and then I go down to the input base, and I see a um, height in here. Here it is, our height of 80px that I gave it. So you can see even a simple thing like width and height. Sometimes it's just a little complicated in MUI, but MUI gives you a lot of great tools for customizing your components, and, and it's really a great component library.